Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we're going to try to determine how strong the muscles in your forearm need to be in order to hold up a barbell, for example, like this. Let's say you're trying to hold up a 20-pound barbell, and the muscle that holds that up is attached to your humerus and goes past the pivot point right here, that's the joint right in your elbow, to your forearm connected with tendons to your hand, and so your weight is in the one one uh, is in your hand right over here and the question is how much force is required by the muscles here in your forearm in order to hold that up well we can see here that the place where the tendon are attached to the humerus is about eight centimeters away from the elbow joint and the elbow joint where the elbow pivots is about 25 centimeters away from the middle of the palm where the 20 pound weight is held we're going, to, we're going to, for the moment, ignore the weight of the forearm itself. It will add some, but it will not be the, the biggest contributing part to the force required in the tendon right here. Also notice the way the tendon is structured, and the muscle is structured. It makes an angle of 75 degrees to where the, the tendons are attached to the humerus up over the joint. There's about a 75 degree angle from the vertical, which means it's a 15 degree angle with the horizontal. So, how strong does that muscle need to be? What is the tension required by that muscle? So, let me draw the picture. So, we can see that this is the force because of the muscle in this direction, which will make an angle of 15 degrees with the horizontal. And that is what we're trying to find, the strength or the force required by that muscle. Notice that 20 pounds is roughly 89 newtons. Again, we can say that if this is our pivot point right there, we call our pivot point pivot point A, that the sum of all the torques about point A must add up to zero. In this case, there's only going to be, there's going to be two, isn't there? There's a force right here, pulling down. That would be the mg, which in this case is equal to 89 newtons. And that's going to form a torque relative to the pivot point here. Notice that this will cause a clockwise motion relative to the pivot point, that means a negative torque. That is equal to a minus mg times a distance of 25 centimeters, and we can leave it in centimeters because those will cancel out, times 25 centimeters, and now plus because this will cause a counterclockwise torque about the pivot point A, that would be the force caused by the muscle, times the perpendicular distance, and let's call it D for now, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. So if we continue the line of action of force, it is this distance right here. Let's call this distance D. Now, of course, that's way too small for you to be able to see what's going on there, but let's redraw that a little bit bigger. Here's the horizontal distance from the pivot point to where the muscle is attached. The muscle is pulling in this direction, and then we have the perpendicular distance right here, which is called D. That's the distance that we're looking for, distance D. This distance from the pivot point to where the muscle is attached is 8 centimeters. And this angle right here, let's call it theta, which is equal to 15 degrees. Which shows that D is therefore equal to the hypotenuse 8 centimeters times the sine of the angle theta, because D is opposite to the angle. When we plug that into our equation, we get the following. Zero is equal to minus mg, which is 89 newtons, times a distance of 25 centimeters, plus the force that we're looking for, the force exerted by the muscle to hold up a 20-pound barbell, and d is equal to the 8 centimeters times the sine of 15 degrees. Which means when we move this to the other side, we turn the equation around, we can see that the force required by the muscle, oop, we're not ready yet to do that, times eight centimeters, times the sine of 15 degrees is equal to, when we move this across, it becomes positive, 89 newtons times 25 centimeters. So the force required by the muscle is equal to 89 newtons times 25 centimeters divided by eight centimeters and divided by the sine of 15 degrees. And let's find out what that is equal to. 89 times 25 divided by eight and divided by 15, take the sine of that, equals, and we have 1,075 newtons. Over 1,000 newtons, that's 
more than the typical weight of a person supported by that muscle in the forearm. Again, converting that to pounds. So we need pounds in the numerator, we need uh, newtons in the denominator. One pound is 4.448 newtons. So divide this by 4.448, and we get 242 pounds of force required by the muscle in your forearm to hold up a 20 pound barbell with your arm like that. It's amazing how strong the muscles are in our body. Just small weights like that require an enormous amount of strength and force to be able to hold them. Quite remarkable. And that's how we apply the laws of physics and the concept of torques to figure these things out.